All right, first first video. We're uh we're gonna we're gonna see if this shit works. Uh, I'm gonna keep it as a hundred as possible, and uh, I'm excited, really excited. So for this first video, I would like to kind of go over some of these uh, emails that I've been getting from Ben Settle, Kyle Milligan, Andrew Tate, Cooper Sterling. These guys are really good copywriters, and my goal is to understand the better how they use the Nesby emotions, which is new, easy, safe, and big. And they're the emotions that you use to sell with because people buy an emotion. They justify with logic. So I'm going to go over to here to my email. And the first one that I'm going to go over is this Kyle Milligan. He sent it out today. Now, first things first to look at, I'm going to say is the subject line. Biggest mistakes rookies make. Now, Kyle is selling to a bunch of copywriters. So it's this is a really good headline to kind of get my attention, at least, because I'm a beginner. And it's great to see, you know, what mistakes can I make? You know, they got the emoji right there. It's, uh, it's a very good. Okay. It only takes one sentence to ruin your entire promo. Right away, starting off with some disruption, just... Really, one one sentence, one sentence can f screw your whole promo. So now I'm like, I'm intrigued. Just one line to lose the sale. I see rookies make this this same mistake over and over. Also, notice how he's using these uh these triple periods like sparingly, but he's actually using them in a break in the sentence. I've seen a lot of guys and how they'll do it. They'll like they'll put them out where it doesn't make sense. They'll be writing a piece of copy and all of a sudden they'll like, you'll be in the middle of a sentence and they're just like, by the way, pause because they want to build suspense, but it's not a break in the sentence. So it doesn't make any sense, but he's uh, doing it very nice right here. I see rookies make the same mistake over and over. Guess what? You're probably making this mistake too. And you don't even realize it. Let me learn. Use something young blood. I like how it's kind of, it's like he's talking to you, you know, it's, it's, it's like he's, he's like speaking to you, you know, it's not really like grammatically correct, but I can hear, you know, someone's voice, like kind of like reprimanding you. It's nice. Click here now before you write another line of copy. By the way, I really dive into, into it around the four minute mark. Peace out, copy, copy squad. P.S. Looking for a community where you can grow your copywriting skills and become a great copywriter? Join. The copy squad inner circle. So really good, short, it's not not a lot. You know, this was intriguing up here. You know, he uses periods pretty well. And I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I wanna click it, but I'm not going to right now because I'm recording a video. Alright, for the next one, we'll go down to Ben Settle, who's apparently I've heard a lot of people say he's the long form copy guy. I haven't read a lot of his emails, so I'm gonna be honest. But there's probably a lot of good information. We'll see if we can kind of glean out the Nesby emotions and see him in action from like uh, an experienced copywriter. All right. The Astonishing Tales of El Benbo, copywriter of the patriarchy. Damn. Okay. I'm intrigued. I mean, I, I, I don't know who El Benbo is, but I'm curious. You may or may not care about this. All right. The 10 year anniversary of my getting divorced is just around the corner. Damn. And I got to thinking about how afterwards the dating game had completely and radically changed while doing my 11 years time in my first marriage. It's kind of alluding to it being prison time, which I know a lot of guys out there can. What's what I'm looking for? they can identify with. So that's interesting. What worked for boomers in 1982 to win the game is not what worked in 2012 at the time. Okay, so this is kind of like an only thing. You know, it's like, what's that? Nesby, New Easy, Safe, Big. Eh, not really, but only is kind of like, like never before seen, you know? What worked then probably won't work now. So you're going to have to understand what works for you, what I'm going to teach you to work right now. 
and it sure as hell doesn't work today in 2022. I had to learn to play a whole other game. So it's a whole different thing. A game it turned out, the better I got at it, the better my copywriting, email, negotiating, status growing, narrative creating, business world building, and discerning between who and what's real and who and what's crap became. And who and what's crap became. The better I got at it, the better my copywriting, email, negotiating, status growing, narrative creating, business world building, and discerning between who and what's real and who and what's crap became. Thus, the March email players issue. March email. It goes into great detail. Well, it kind of right here, what he's talking about is how what he's learned has gotten, has made him better at this, these various skills, which is important. It goes into great detail about the same techniques and strategies that made El Bembo's romantic life a whole lot more fun and exciting, while also making my bank account a whole lot fatter and secure too. So he's El Bembo. Hmm. But there's a caveat for female email players of the horde. I like his I like his verbiage. You know, he uses words like horde, you know, appears, crap, hell. It kind of gets you like feeling his what his emotions are at the time. And it's very important they know before reading or subscribing. A lot of what's upcoming of what this of what the upcoming March issue will not help <clears throat> will not help your romantic goals. In fact, unless you want a needy, weak willed, mush cookie kind of guy, applying the info will almost certainly work against you in your romantic life, even if it amps up your sales and success. It's very important they know before reading it or subscribing. It's very similar to my villains books. Hmm. When I published the first one, I got the feedback below from a woman who read it. And every word she and every word she says applies to the upcoming March email players issue. I've read your villains books and it's awesome. And in many ways, it's how I've lived my life, my most productive times of my life. Without even realizing, I was following the rules you set in your book. I can see how this makes men more attracted to the op more attractive to the opposite sex. Needy whiny guys are not a turn on. Now that is true. From what I've learned in my time, kind of in this space, is that you're more valuable, you're more important. The less needy you are, it's not just in business, but it's also in life. You know. So I think good, at least good information so far. Yet as a woman, it doesn't tend to lead to great romantic partnerships. In fact, the opposite. It seems to lead to being a single lady while following your mission. Yep. Or attracting what I would call feminine men. Again, not the sexist. See, needy whiny guys above. Not the sexiest. Yeah. Or it leads men looking to take you off your game who try to chip away at your success to turn you into a weak woman who will do their bidding. Well... Yeah. You know the guys who claim to want strong women only to do everything in their power to tear, to tear her down, destroy her confidence so they control her and leave, then leave her because she's not a strong woman they were initially attracted to and they go straight on to the dating of blonde bimbo and marrying her. Go figure. Of course, that's what I've heard. I hope your sequel helps us villainesses not only because business and life, but also in romantic relationships. Okay, one thing about boss girls... I'm going to be completely 100% right here. When you build money as a woman, you are taking yourself out of the dating pile. And Fresh and Fit says this all the time, but it's fucking true. A woman never dates down. She only dates up. So when you build a bunch of fucking money, you're not going to be able to date someone who has less money than you. And a lot of guys don't have a lot of fucking money. So... The guys that are going to start coming to you, like you fucking say, are feminine men. You know, and not the sexiest, obviously, because you want a high value man, but you're taking yourself out of the fucking pool. So just having someone 
talk about this and then complaining about how it's destroying her confidence is uh, I, I don't know what ex- I don't know what they expect. She's not a strong woman. They initially attracted to. I don't. I don't get why people are attracted to boss girls. It's. It's. That's. That's insane. Sorry. I don't. I don't want a girl trying to tell me what to fucking do. I'm a man. I know what to do. Anyway, she's absolutely correct. And no, it's not fair or meant to be. Biomechanics doesn't care about anyone. How anyone feels, one way or the other. It simply is what it is. Okay, and a public service announcement. If you're a woman, some of the March issue, maybe all of it, will likely rankle you a bit. And if that happens, don't hate the email player. Hate the game. (laughs) Alright, the deadline to subscribe is coming up soon. Okay, we got some urgency. The deadline is coming up. The top of the email players in time to get it. Go here, then settle. Okay. It's interesting. I, I'm not really sold on it, but it's not really not bad. All right, here's the last. This is the Kyle Milligan ones from yesterday. Write better converting leads. Hey, Kyle, how do you write a hot lead? This is a question I get often. First, you must understand every great leader has one clearly defined common theme. Not two, not three. Every great lead has one clearly defined common theme or common theme, but one. Okay. And you'll discover, okay, there's the discovery motion. That's kind of new groundbreaking. You know, it makes, it makes you feel like you're learning something new. Everything you write in your ad or promo is always tied back to one common theme. It doesn't matter if you're writing a Facebook ad, a sales promo, an email, or even a cold pitch to a client. If you don't define this theme right out of the gates, so here this is kind of like a, I guess it's kind of a threat. If you don't do this, then you're going to actually have some problems to deal with. You'll never be able to portray the experience your reader will have if they buy the product. You'll never be able to portray the experience your reader will have if they buy the product. So if you can't do that, you can't sell anything. It's just that's a that's a large threat you know but you're kind of like teaching them hey if you don't do this you're not going to succeed and that's kind of putting you in the position where wow i have to click on this or i'm not going to sell anything today i'll show you how plus two real life examples you got the plus emotion i like that plus real life examples from high converting sales letters minute 228 peace outs copy squad kyle P.S. Have you seen our new copy, our new products, Copy Squad Net products? No, I haven't, but now I'm interested. All right. Let's do some more Ben Settle. I haven't been catching up on his stuff, so. Plus, they're longer, so maybe we'll get some more information. An open letter to the imbalanced and the obsessed. Last month, Steph, this will be the last one, by the way. Last month, Stephanie and I had a weekend meeting here at the house for the software companies. We were embroiled in these days. Troy Broussard came here with Tom Bale, Bale, who does a lot of work for us, and Nicole English, our operations manager, with was on Zoom from Australia. And three and for three days we hashed out all kinds of ideas and plans, during which the topic of balance came up, or rather imbalance. Turns out the entire software team all exceptionally brilliant, is imbalanced. The head developer, especially so, as he is a true savant and can do work of 10 coders in one-tenth of the time and still have multiple other projects going simultaneously, it is mentally able to keep track of it all. The entire software team is imbalanced. Okay. Not even an exaggeration. Guys, guys, Guy can't turn his brain off if he wanted to. And of course, the inevitable crash from operating at this level is as devastating as the brilliant time, as the brilliant times are productive. Troy is much the same way, which I can attest to. But when I laughed at these guys and told them how it's that sucks, and thankfully I am balanced, everyone in the room looked at me like I was crazy. Uh, 
Ben, said Nicole. You're not at all balanced. I waking up at 1 to 2 a.m., gagging down, literally, 150 capsules per day, 3 plus hours of hiking per day, 3 to 4 days per week, literally to the point of having to get a new pair of shoes every other month just to function and be completely alone for at least 12 to 14 hours a day to feel somewhat human. And so it is. All of us in that room and everyone on the team is completely imbalanced. Some in healthier ways than others. And whether or not that is ultimately good or bad thing depends on when, on the when and the what. But there is a good chance anyone reading this who can't do things without going to extremes has a hard time quieting your brain. Yeah, I get that. And has a constant life or death battle with burnout and obsessively works to get as much things without, to get as much done in as little time as humanly possible. While always slipping farther and farther behind where you want to be at in the business and other goals is the same way. While always slipping farther and farther behind where you want to be at in a business or other goals is the same way. Yeah, it seems you only have a certain amount of like, I've heard people say fucks to give at energy. It's really just like, it's kind of like water. You know, you could only put a certain amount of water into each bucket, you know, but I totally get that because I, I, I'll i be like no life is some sort of some aspect of my life and it'll get really good. Like I'll, I'll no life copy for like a month and then I'll be like, wow. My skills have increased. I'm so, so much better. But then it's like my gym, me going to the gym has gotten less or it's gotten, I've gotten weaker or slower. Yeah. So interesting. It's it's really just like Ben, Ben's emails are kind of just like, they make you think. Let's continue. If that's you, I have no Yoda like words of wisdom. We all cope in our own little ways. And what works for me won't necessarily work for you. One of the things that works for me, though, is writing a lot. Yeah. Not just emails, though. But writing books. Email players issues. Comic book strips for comic book styles. Ads that sell things as well as graphic novelization of my zombie cop book I'm working on. And some epic fantasy fiction I've been engaging in lately. The most profitable of those activities is the emails. Yeah, emails are pretty profitable. It's what my email player's newsletter is all about. Although it's far more strategical than tactical. A lot of people don't really understand the difference between strategy and tactics. Tactics are more like one decision that you make to make it better. You know, like like making the right decision in a split second. Strategy is more like the underlying plan. You see this a lot in chess. So the lower ranked people, they have really bad tactics, which means they make bad decisions all at like the same time. It's just a bunch of little bad decisions. And once they finally get good at tactics, then they can start working on the strategy. So the t- once they start making the tiny little mistakes and they can actually learn, okay, this, 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 this will happen. But then make a plan. That's what strategy is. Thus, no hacks, swipes, or tricks. Just broad, sweeping email strategies you can use with what I teach in the book. I send to new subscribers to ratchet up them email profits of yours. To learn more, go to emailplayers.com. Ben Suttle. Yep. Kind of want to go to email email players now. Okay, I had an email by... It was from... Uh, it was a while ago, but it was really nice. And I, it made me think about it so much that I've been like, it's been on my mind. Like one of these sale emails, Gary Halbert email. Yeah. But I didn't finish it. Now I want to go back and look at it. I know I said that was going to be the last one, but yeah. Okay. Here's a thank you for signing up to our email list. Click the link below to read this letter on a web page instead of in this email. 
I'll go into it like that. Let me see if this is the one I'm thinking of. Eh, I don't like reading it on this one. Okay. Do you remember receiving an email from me with a dollar bill attached to it a couple weeks ago? Do you remember? Good. And now as you can see, once again, I'm sending you a letter with money attached. So there's there's like a picture. There should be like a picture of like a, a penny. Yeah. Uh, I'm sending you a letter with money attached. This time it's a penny. A nice, bright, shiny copper penny. What's going on here? Why do I keep sending you letters with money attached? Am I some kind of nut or something? I love how he's, he's so conversational. He's like, he's so, it's like I'm talking to this guy. I'm, I'm getting like a sense of who he is and like, like we're, we're sitting down for a cup of coffee or something. I really think that that's, that that's something I really like about Mr. Howard. Maybe so. Come to think of it, nobody has, has ever accused me of being sane. However, I'm probably not going to read this whole thing because this video is getting kind of long right now. Okay. However, this time, at least, there's a bit of method to my madness. You see, what I'm trying to do is condition you. What, what I want is to get you used to the idea of receiving money in the mail as a result of your association with me. I want people... I want it to become a habit. I want it to happen every day. I want you to experience what it's like to be flooded with so much mail. You will have to hire an extra 40 people just to count it all. Make your bank deposits. So back then they used to sell like actual like mail, like letters. I don't know. That's, that's cool. Kind of like a blast from the past. Don't scoff. I've already done it dozens of times. And now, my friend, I'm going to show you how to do it too. Won't that be nice? Let's get started. First of all, if you've been paying attention, you should have already learned something that could dramatically increase the bottom line profitability of almost any direct marketing organization. Did you miss it? I bet not. What I'm talking about, of course, is the proper way to respond to an order. Do you know that most mail companies do when they get an order? Usually the procedure goes something like this. They log it in, they key punch the customer data, generate a label, send the label to the fulfillment facility, and then the order gets filled. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Here's what they should be doing. As soon as they get an order, they should immediately send what I call a thank you, please give me more money letter right away without waiting for key punching without waiting for label generation, without waiting till the order is filled, without waiting for anything. It should be done like, it should be done like the way I did it when you ordered from me, remember? Remember how you got a very dramatic and incidentally very sincere letter from me that thanked you for your order? Remember how I took the trouble to reassure you that you had made a wise decision when you subscribed to my letter? Remember how I resold you a little bit the benefits to come. And then, do you remember how, at the end of my letter, I told you I had enclosed another subscription order form, and how I asked you to give it to someone you love? What's that? You say you did catch all that? You say you're already doing something similar, or at least going to start? Good, good, good. That's, that's kind of just the one thing I wanted to get across. A lot of people, when they get a client, or other things... They'll just be like, thanks, not a, thanks, give me money, give me more money. <laughs> I don't know, interesting. So that's going to go over the email copy, uh, I don't know what you call it, review of today. And these will get better as I get better. So I really appreciate you guys coming. This was fun. Thank you. Goodbye.